DGI Spark, one year later. Hey guys, it's G Martin coming at you with another drone video. We're gonna be talking about the DJI Spark in this one, as it has been out for more than a year now. It came out May 2017, and I've had this drone for about eight months now, but I'm gonna talk about if this drone is still worth it one year later. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the good and the bad of the drone. That's including the features, the size, the battery life, the specs it includes. And then I'm also gonna talk about what I would like to be included if they were to make a DJI Spark. Too. Now just for all you new viewers, I have had this drone for a while now and I've flown it many times. I've even crashed it a few times. I've got a bunch of cool footage. I have a bunch of videos on my channel. I'd recommend checking those out if you haven't already. But we're going to jump right into what I don't like about the DJI Spark. The first thing, battery life. Obviously if you have this drone you know exactly what I'm talking about. The battery life on this drone is only about 16 minutes. Now I wish this was a lot better but I get it because you know the size of the drone is not all that big. And this battery is pretty tiny actually, so just to even break 15 minutes, I, I'd call that pretty impressive for the size of the drone. Now I wish it was better, but I mean, not much I can do there. Okay, next feature we're going to talk about is the various video capturing features. Now this drone only records 1080p 30fps. Now this is fine for me since I only do YouTube, but I know there's a lot of video creators out there who wish there was more options with this drone. They wish it did 60 frames at 1080p, even 4K. I mean, 4K is pushing it a little bit as that might be in the next trend they come out with, but even if they just added a 60 FPS for the 1080 feature, this would make a world of a difference. You can make it slow motion. A lot of people's videos are 60 frames a second. I only record in 30 though, so this doesn't affect me so much, but if they included a 60 frames a second, that would have made this drone so much better. Okay, the next thing is how this drone connects to your phone. It does it over Wi-Fi. Now, a lot of DJI other drones have other features to do this. I know a lot of them use the Lightbridge technology, which is a lot quicker, and there's less latency with it. With the Wi-Fi, you can definitely tell some lag between the input you actually put on the drone and the video you see on your phone. Now you can buy an OTG cable for this drone, but a lot of them aren't optimized correctly. I've actually bought one and it just straight up did not work with my drone. I don't know if it was user error. Maybe it was a software issue, but I really just do not know. It would not work for me and it kind of bothered me because I bought it hoping it would decrease that latency, but it didn't work. Okay, that's all my negatives of the drone. Now I'm gonna talk about what I like about this drone. First thing, obviously, the size of the drone. I mean, this thing fits in the palm of your hand. It does not weigh all that much. It's very small. You can take it with you pretty much wherever. You can throw it in your backpack and it will not weigh you down as it is super lightweight. Even when you have the remote with you, it is still very lightweight. So it's not gonna weigh you down. You can take it with you wherever you wanna go. And this is way better than a lot of DJI's other drones. I know the Mavic and the Mavic Air, those aren't so bad, but say you have a Phantom, you have to either get the included case it comes with, which is very bulky, or you have to buy a custom fitted backpack for this where you can fit it in. And these are still very bulky. But when you have the DJI Spark, it comes in this tiny little carrying case and you can just throw it in your backpack and it will not take up all that much room. So the size of this drone is very nice. Next great feature, the ease of use of this drone. Even if you're an experienced flyer and you get the DJI Spark, it has enough features to make you happy. As in there's a bunch of things where you can take the time to learn and it will increase your flying capabilities with this drone which will obviously make your experience of flying this drone a whole lot better. But yet again, if you're a beginner, there aren't too many features to overwhelm you and you can learn them very quickly and take the drone up and get some great footage. Next feature I like is that this drone includes a gimbal. The gimbal allows for smooth movements when you're flying around in normal mode. In sport mode, it's a little different. I'll talk about that in a second. But when you're flying in normal mode, all the footage is pretty much very stable. The only thing that gets a little shaky is when you're tilting side to side very quick and you can see that in the video. As there's no axis that prevents the drone from doing this, it's that that is all controlled by you. That is all your input when you put on the remote or the phone and you can make that very smooth or it can be very rough. But other than that, when you're flying in normal mode, all the footage will be very stable and you'll be very happy with the results. Now, like I said, we're gonna talk about sport mode and the gimbal. When you're flying in sport mode, the gimbal capabilities kind of decrease Actually, they decrease a lot, as when you're flying, if you try and turn side to side, it messes with the gimbal in a way that I can't explain. I'll show some footage here, but it just looks very weird. I don't know how to describe this. It like It's like the gimbal loses all its capabilities, 
and pretty much it just, it's at the hand of sport mode. And the footage looks very weird, it looks shaky, I just don't like it. You can get smooth shots in sport mode, but you have to know how to do this properly. I have another video talking about that. I'll link that right up here for you to check out, but it just gets a little shaky. Next thing we're gonna talk about is the price of this drone. On Amazon right now, you can buy this drone and the remote for $400. This is a great deal. As I bought my remote separately, I wanna say it ran me up around $500. You can get the drone and the remote for $400, that is amazing. I wish I would have waited and bought it at this price, but what can you do? Now that we're done talking about my likes and dislikes of this drone, now I'm going to talk about what I hope they include if they do make a DJI Spark 2. First thing is longer battery life. Obviously this would be amazing for this drone as its size is very small. If they could up this even 5-10 minutes to increase that flight time, this would be amazing because this drone is just so small. Something about it, it's different than all their other drones and I just like it a lot. If they increase this flight time to make it competitive with the Mavic Air or even the Mavic Pro, this would be amazing. I believe more people would buy this drone and they would see the good side of it. Next feature would be more camera recording options. I wish they would include 4K on this drone. That would increase your video capabilities by a whole bunch, meaning you could shoot in 4K and get very cinematic footage. You can get cinematic footage at 1080p, and you can't make it look well, but something about 4K just makes it a whole lot better. Maybe it is just the resolution, but it also makes images look sharper, makes the videos look sharper, it just makes everything look better. Also, if they could include 60 frames a second at either of these features, that would complete the video capabilities of this drone. My next and last feature is a 3-axis gimbal. This drone is very small, and if they could somehow fit a 3-axis gimbal into this, that would pretty much solve the sports mode problem. It would also make it better in normal mode as when you're tilting side to side it would make it smoother. But in sport mode, that's where this problem really comes in. Because if you're in sport mode flying around and you do have a 3-axis gimbal, the camera can handle it. I've flown my buddy's Mavic Pro and this pretty much taught me that this is completely true. When you're flying it around, I was in sport mode and the camera was doing just fine. There was no shakiness, it was level, it was still, and it was just overall very nice. If they put this in the DJI Spark 2, I'll probably have to go buy one. Okay guys, that's going to be the end of this 